currently the 11th uh, in terms of identified victims of trafficking in the country. Um, and the governor, Governor Hogan, has made human trafficking one of the initiatives that he definitely wants to combat in his tenure. Um, one of the things that we have noticed over the past three years, now we've had funding since 2014 to do work of building the infrastructure for our state of Maryland to address the issue of human trafficking and even more specifically, child sex trafficking. Um, over the course of the past legislative session, we passed four bills in this state. I'm sorry, three bills in this state that address trafficking. One that has now made labor trafficking a crime and two that have helped to strengthen the response to those who have been affected by human trafficking. And I think as a part of that, the concept of human trafficking being something we need to address in our state has become more and more known. As a result of that, I think our conference has really grown over the past three years. We as a society tend to think about a child prostitute and there are no child prostitutes. The issue of child sex trafficking is so much more. What it comes down to is people who are being victimized and exploited for some sort of commercial gain. And what happens is we picture what the media, what the news puts out there. We think of law and order and we think of, you know, this, this person on the street. And what really happens is we have dozens, hundreds of victims who are affected, who might e never even leave their homes the first time they're trafficked. Our keynote speaker, speaker today spoke about the fact that his first trafficker was his mother at the age of seven years old. And unfortunately, there are many people like that that we're overlooking because we're picturing a certain type of victim. We're picturing someone who's standing on a corner as opposed to the person who really is being sold for so many other reasons for sex. No one wants to talk about it, but the problem is because we don't talk about it, more people are victimized because what ends up happening is the victims themselves are told no one wants to hear that. I mean, think about just abuse in a family in the first place. People know that abuse is happening and don't want to say it. Or when a, a child discloses that someone is hurting them, usually the parents are like, hush, don't talk about that. You know, if that person who is exploiting the child is responsible for your rent, your food, your your place in, in the world, no one wants to talk about that because no one wants to jeopardize that. And that puts the child in an unfortunate situation. And when it comes to more than abuse, when you're talking about trafficking, which is an even more insidious form of abuse, an even more heinous crime, no one really ever wants to talk about that. Because we don't want to admit that that heinous crime could be happening in our midst. So this particular conference, our theme is a call to action. Because we want people to not just be aware of the situation, but start to act in whatever role they have in society. So if they're a community person, think about how can you provide a job, a living wage to someone so that when they are being uh, coming out of the situation, they can find a job, that they can get skills training. If you are an educator or someone in a school, making sure that they can identify what are the unique needs of victims. Because if a child has been trafficked and in and out of school, then they've missed a lot of school. That's not something they should be penalized for. That's something that they should be helped to integrate back into the school. Um, so think about how can you act at your level in society? And that's what we're trying to get people to do is if you are actually a child welfare worker, a juvenile justice worker, you have a specific mandate, but everyone can act to support victims of trafficking in our state. So our workshops range from everything from identifying the signs and the indicators of trafficking all the way to once you've identified them, how do you integrate this knowledge into the work that you're doing with children and youth? Because we want you to prevent trafficking from occurring, but if it's already occurring, we want you to be able to address it and help to support people who have been victimized so that they can move from victims to survivors and then ultimately to thrivers. There are a number of signs, but the key is to pay attention to the children and youth in your community. If you see something is wrong, ask that child, what has happened to you? 
what is going on. Don't ask them what's wrong with you. Because when you say to someone what's wrong with you, you put them on the defensive. Nothing's wrong. But if you say what's happened to you, what's going on, engage them in conversations. That's a way for them to open up to you about what really is happening and to get them to say things to you about what's going on because we sweep things under the rug. So if, if that child has already been told, don't say anything, and you say, what's wrong with you, they're not going to say anything. But if you say what's happening and you engage them in conversation, they may open up to you and share with you what really is happening so that you can hear what those signs are. Maybe they'll say, maybe they'll mention the abuse and they might not mention the trafficking, but the more that they realize that you really want to know what's happening and engage them, the more they will tell you what's going on, even before you get to, you know, random indicators that they're fully being trafficked, like money and drugs and things of that nature. There's steps way before you even notice those.